Hey everybody, Corey from Aquarium Co-op here. Today I've got 10 ideas for cleaner fish. Now, you might have landed on here and you're wanting a fish that's just going to clean up your aquarium, you'll never do maintenance again. Well, that doesn't exist, but if you want things that will help break down waste further and further and further down the chain so that your plants are getting fertilized the most and it's the easiest to clean your aquarium, then yes, this list is for you. So, number one. I'm going to start with some oddball stuff because I feel like if I just tell you all the normal stuff, you'll be bored. So uh, rainbow sharks and red tail sharks in tanks kind of 29 gallons and up. They'll get roughly four-ish inches. They're pretty territorial. Only keep one or the other and only one of that species. And they'll be kind of a little bit of a tank boss. But the rainbow uh, shark will be a little bit of a algae eater. And the red tail shark is mostly just cleanup crew, like general eat stuff between the cracks and crevices and poop off the bottom and that kind of stuff. And same with the rainbow shark. It'll eat uh, algae, but all those things as well. So it's just a good one to have around in your arsenal if it fits the right look of your tank. You know, if it, especially a larger tank, it's kind of cool just to put one in there and be like, hey, what's that thing? Uh, I've been thinking about adding one to the 800 gallon. Just haven't done it yet. They come in albino. They come in uh, kind of a black color. They also come in glow colors now. So the next one I've got is earth eaters now if you don't know what that is they're a cichlid uh, typically they're gonna get mm, about this big you can get some a little bit smaller a little bit bigger some other big catfish are classified in that earth eater thing like in my inner gallon like with the giraffe cats but what they do is they take up big scoops of gravel or sand and they sift it through their gills or run it through their mouth and spit it back out now what they're doing is they're looking for any particles of food and uh, just debris and leftovers, and they'll end up swallowing that. And as their, their gut digests that, it comes back out as poop, so it doesn't remove it from the system, but it's been broken down by the bacteria in the gut and stuff again, so it's further uh, along in the chain and closer to your plants taking it up or you taking it out of the aquarium. So there's a, a bunch of different types. They're very cool. Most of them are docile, uh, but I would say at least a 55 gallon or more to be playing with the earth eaters and bigger the better on those and they like sand more than they like gravel but uh, they're a really fun thing to add to the bottom of a tank. Next up I've got the flag fish. Now this is a, a North American native. Really good at eating hair algaes and stuff like that. They've kind of got this mouth that they grab on and stuff and pull it off. They can be hard on finer leaf plants and that kind of stuff but they'll scrounge around and eat blackbird algae hair algae they'll eat between rocks um they're a type of killifish so they're a little bit rambunctious uh you can keep them in as small as maybe a 20 gallon but you know you'd want fast moving tank mates and that kind of stuff but they're a great kind of good looking fish you know they kind of look like they have a flag on them that's why they're the flag fish and then they also help clean up so they might fit into your plan of your tank they also can go in unheated tanks so it's one of the few that can kind of be a cleaner fish if you will and also be unheated hey let me know down in the comments what you're keeping in your 10 gallons so that way everyone can see all these different ideas and get ideas for their own and we'll crowdsource a bunch of cool things together next up i've got corydoras there's lots of types you got the dwarfs you've got the normals you've got even some of the big like the brocus that get huge um you know kind of that four inch mark but they've got all these whiskers on their mouth and they kind of go around the rocks and get in between cracks and crevices, eat all the food, look for worms, look for tiny crustaceans. And overall, they look cool, but then they're going to, any food that gets by middle and top feeders, they'll clean up and kind of just kind of vacuum it up. Kind of like having a Roomba, a little group of Roombas running around, uh, cleaning up for you. Yes, they still go to the bathroom, so eventually you got to take that waste out with plant growth or a gravel vac, but they're a cool looking fish, and why not? have things that look cool but also help break waste down a further step. Next up I've got platies. Now a lot of people don't think about platies as a cleaner fish but live bears in general are made to kind of pick and eat all day long and they've kind of got that same mouth like the uh, flagfish does where they can kind of pull algae off and uh, really get at food. So they're good at that. They replicate uh, so a lot of times you'll have you know, three inch adults all the way down to half inch babies and they can get into different nooks and crannies and get stuff out of rock work and in between plants and all that kind of stuff. So they're kind of like, you are you know, if you had a car and you were, let's say, used a, a vacuum to vacuum all the carpets, they'd be that fine little duster brush getting in the vents and doing all that kind of work. And because they're babies and constantly growing, they're constantly hungry. So they're little working machines and they come in a lot of different colors and that might fit your scheme of like, oh, I need a lot of color but I want something to munch on everything that does both. Next up, I'd be sad if I didn't mention snails. Snails are one of the best absolute 
cleaners in a tank you can have. They will eat almost anything. They'll digest poop. They'll digest uh, allergies. They'll digest rotting leaves. Almost anything, even dead fish. They'll keep breaking it down. Uh, I really love ram's horn snails. I like Malaysian trumpet snails a lot. I like uh, nerite snails. When you start getting into like mystery snails, those are more pets than they are cleaning. Like they make as much waste and they eat as much food as a fish would. So you really got to like them as a as a object in your aquarium to really want those. Where the other ones, you can kind of add them in and they're in addition to the fish. But snails, you know, you're on a love them or hate them kick. You know, you're usually you get on one one of those two sides of the fence. And I personally love them. I recommend everyone keep them. But if you hate them, hey, skip out on them. Next up, I've got loaches, the antithesis of uh, or the nemesis of snails. They love to eat snails. Most of them do. Um, but there's a lot of different loaches. There's things like coolie loaches, won't eat snails, but they're little squirmy snakes that can get into the crevices and clean for you. Then you've got like clown loaches and uh, you know yo-yo loaches and that type of thing where they'll definitely suck a snail right out of its shell. Uh, they can get some get really large, some don't get that big. You've got pseudomonkey lunch lunches loaches uh the dwarf chain loaches only get about three inches and they'll eat snails uh, and then you've got things that are more of like a, an algae eater where it would be like the reticulated hill stream loach they'll eat on flat surfaces and that kind of stuff so it's a wide group of fish and they all kind of do different things but they all pretty much are scavengers in nature so that's that's the good news is like okay you know you're gonna have to dedicate to feed them but they'll eat leftovers pretty much no matter where they go and they'll take care of a snail population. So if you're on that side of the fence, get yourself some snails. That might be part of your cleanup. A lot of times people, how do I get rid of these snails? How do I clean up the snails? Well, loaches would help you with that. Now this one seems counterintuitive, but goldfish. Now you're going, but goldfish are super dirty. Typically they're kept in tanks that are too small for them. They get very large. Now we can use this to our benefit. If we're going to get a fish that's 12 inches long, and it loves to pick up all the gravel and eat all the algae and eat other fish's poop and do all these things. That actually makes it a really good fish at cleaning. We just need to pair it with the right animals. So maybe you've got a 240 gallon tank or a 300 gallon tank and you've got these big predator fish or you've got turtles or something that just makes a lot of mess. Uh, maybe you've got a couple of Oscars that are this big and you put a, you can put a goldfish in this big and a lot of times they'll tolerate it. Those goldfish are messy eaters, stuff coming out their gills and uh, maybe they you know poop a lot the goldfish will eat all of that and help break it down further and get it into your filters and so you can gravel back it out and then, uh, clean your canister that kind of stuff and get it up out of there so they can be really really useful especially with turtles that are real real messy but there there is a time and a place for goldfish to be cleaners and you could just have a goldfish tank maybe you got a 200 gallon tank you got just some goldfish in general they keep a very clean bottom of the tank and everything ends up in the filtration or uh, you know in the water column and then you just water change it out so they're actually pretty clean fish put in the right size tank i mean if you made me live in my car for a month you're gonna go man your car is dirty like well yeah i was stuck in my car same thing with a goldfish give them the appropriate size and they'll be a much cleaner living human last but not least we've got the bristlenose placostomus now i don't want to do just the normal one because you guys are going to go yeah i know bristlenose placostomus they're great they eat algae they scavenge they eat wood they do all these things but what about like the super red or what about the medusa pleco or uh, maybe the new gold ones we found in Peru. Like there's some variants in there that look pretty cool but also give you all the benefits of a bristlenose pleco normally would. So I would look into some of those maybe a little bit rarer forms. Maybe a claro pleco. They're dwarfs. They only get about that big. There's a huge variety of over 200 different types and more being discovered all the time. They're great I include them in almost every single tank I do they can live with African cichlids they can live in your community tank they can live with goldfish in my experience um, so all the stuff that I'm normally doing they work out well and they're my go-to allergy eater besides snails uh, and they just they they can move from tank to tank you know like I just like oh I'm taking this tank down you can go live over here you can breed them you can have a bunch of fun and I think there's a really well-rounded and hardy fish for anyone and you know i would say 29 gallon and up if you go some of the smaller species maybe a 10 gallon but 29 gallons and up you can handle the load and there's enough for them to eat and it shouldn't be too much of a struggle so i hope you enjoyed those kind of 10 different al not algae eaters but cleanup crew people some eat algae some eat snails some eat poop uh but some ideas to incorporate what you got going in there like obviously you got your centerpieces then you're adding a support crew to make those things just look better all the time so good luck let me know what you like 
or maybe you, there's fish you found that really do a lot of cleaning that people don't think about. Like maybe gouramis, gouramis, sparkling gouramis, that kind of stuff. They're known to go and eat hydra and that kind of stuff, or a spixie snail will do that too. So there's other oddball creatures that are doing all these things and maybe you know of a few and maybe you've got a good combo you like put it down below and tank size you're keeping it in and how long it's been there and how it's doing for you so we can all kind of crowdsource and get ideas together so we'll see you in the next one i thank you guys for hanging out and uh, have a good day do yourself a favor hit that subscribe button turn on the notifications you need more videos like this in your life we bring them to you every week from all around the world